issue of uh, standards and uh, federated identity management, uh, to my mind, uh, stands out uh, as one of the very important uh, ideas that they have discussed. Finance sector being highly regulated, uh, many of the central regulatory agencies have already prescribed uh, these kind of norms for identity management, two-factor authentication, and so on. I think we need to talk about standards at the global level and uh, promote this across the industry. And federated identity management is something, again, which will be uh, universally applicable to many other sectors uh, which are trying to deliver services across the net. I think the thing that struck me is that we can't have another or a crisis of confidence in the financial services sector. And so we all globally have a common interest to assure the integrity and uh, maintain the trust and confidence of transactions on that global infrastructure. We're going to move on to essential government services. <clears throat> and, uh, and that's uh, Michael Alanya from Motorola. Thank you, Melissa. Good morning. Uh, essential government services uh, scoped, and we define this as providing civilians with food, water, shelter, and the fact that it needs to be considered within a global construct as separately bounded and protected. Um, leading or lagging, there's an inevitability to e-government. And the intertwining of essential government services with the national security military complex creates unintended and potentially indiscriminate vulnerabilities. The international community would be encouraged to implement policies that provide for mutually assured survival for the delivery of essential government services. The, the additional findings included um, the finding that if each country acts independently, this is a difficult problem to contain. There needs to be agreement on common trust guidelines that allow step improvements. Uh, otherwise, alternative options include private architectures, for example, something on the order of GovNet. There were recommendations that nation states should research and agree on common standards that support delivery of essential government services applications such as uh, universal ad electronic identity or priority services. Uh, stakeholders should develop effective frameworks and guidelines and definitions for inter and intra-agency communications for cybersecurity responses on a worldwide basis. Uh, participants should develop memorandums of pre-approval and best practices for international backup, restoration, and relief for key systems. Uh, it's important, the group found, to define boundaries and build a, a broad information sharing environment. Uh, they went on to say that education of stakeholders, a common language, uh, needs to be developed for outreach and education. And then international agreements for consolidation and incentives for deployment of systems that develop, that deliver essential government services are needed. And all this uh, leading to improved response and coordination and cooperation between multiple essential government services delivery and response organizations. Thanks, Michael. John. So uh, I, got a, I had the fortune of spending a little bit of time in the, in the ESG track, uh, the EGS track, rather, excuse me. And one of the things I think that was a, a key point that got pulled out of it was the fact that in most constructs of operations of, uh, of times of crisis or times of war, that there are operating principles in which you're trying not to harm civilians. And as a result, you typically do not have commingled infrastructures in ways that essentially take civilian and government and have them acting exactly at the same time in the same place, a la something along the lines of don't bomb the hospital. The internet, on the other hand, and this was drawn out in, in this particular uh, discussion, is commingled by nature. And it essentially is a comms infrastructure, which is a natural place of vulnerability for any nation. 
So how to actually cause a uh, modality of operations when there are times of crisis or times of conflict uh, where you're not taking out the civilian part while you're attempting to take out the government part was essential in that piece. I'd like to, and I, I don't want to call attention to it because I think that was a key finding. Second, just small comment to it. Um, I, I think what I heard as an underpinning of theme was the delivery of services uh, from governments are in fact increasingly using the internet as a service delivery vehicle. And in so much as that's the case, the basic necessities of life are starting to show up as enabled by it. And that's an additional part of that same concern, but it is one that uh, I think essentially needed to be called out. Thank you. Kamlesh? Yeah, I think I would like to echo what uh, John has said. Uh, basically, the infrastructure that is being used uh, that is common for delivery of all kinds of services under the EGS, but then the same infrastructure is being used for uh, military and other purposes as well. So it is a, we have seen in the civilian sector also, in terms of normal uh, kind of warfare, that civilian installations get bombed, basically when you're trying to target uh, specific uh, military identities or military uh, people. So we will have to create rules of engagement in such a way that the infrastructure that is being used for delivery of services, that is somehow sheltered from these kind of attacks when a cyber conflict is taken to be a cyber warfare level because the lines of demarcation are very, very thin. So this will be a great challenge for us to identify what it could be. Uh, secondly, I would like to comment on the uh, identity system, continuing from the banking sector or the finance sector. This is one area where nations are beginning to identify uh, electronic identity of individuals. As probably you might be knowing that in, Indi in India, there's a big uh, project which is currently started on identification of individuals and all services shall be linked to that. People will be identified electronically based on biometrics. So this is one area which will require uh, a lot of cyber security measures while protecting the privacy of individuals. So this is something which will have to be guarded. I think one of the things that struck me most on this particular panel is the overall need for um, an international backup system to the internet or those internet connected essential services and how do we start to encourage, promote, and develop what that backup system would look like across borders and enable those essential services to be delivered to our citizens. So I look forward to more dialogue on that. John, I think that's gonna be really important. Um, uh, the next panel is media, and uh, Deborah Tate from the FCC will be presenting for the group. Thank you so much, Melissa, and actually it's formerly of the FCC, so you all can now just call me Citizen Tate. Um, first of all, my really deep appreciation to the East-West Institute for including this topic, which actually has been transformed. And while you all were talking about cybercrime and cyber war, we also talked about a critical infrastructure in our country, and that is our kids in cyberspace. Um, how do we balance these incredible opportunities that we all see every day with the risks? And so our expert group really did try to focus on some of the vulnerabilities um, in a different way, and that is that our children are actually finding. And I just wanted to share you a few, share a few statistics with you that I think many of you may not be aware of. 90% of teens are on the internet, 60% chat every single day, three and four share very personal information. 30% in South Korea are at risk for some kind of uh, 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 addiction. And then, of course, we heard about the hundreds of millions of kids that are online in China yesterday from Mr. Liu. Um, the international community must join to enable all of our children, in fact, all global citizens, to reap the enormous benefits. We've heard about a lot of them from e-health and e-government that we were just discussing to the jobs of tomorrow. Um, and unlike some of the prickly issues that you all have discussed in your areas, we were very fortunate because we've 